They were like right here. Here, here, Samaria. Here, right? Continuing on. All these artifacts and documents are the brother with the fez on, or the cap on. Here you see the Hindu star, right on the Brahma. Here you see it in Mexico. Okay. These are all these artifacts that our European brothers and sisters are aware of. All right. You can see it here. The brother of Mexico with the joint on. Okay. With the feather crown on. And then you got this brother with the Dogon cap on, with the Pope still wears with the with the fish cap. Okay. All this stuff is all ancient stuff. Okay. Okay, and this is this is how we this is how we governed ourselves. Alright, all around the world. Alright, you see the brothers here with the sash between their legs. And the sister here in Africa with the sash between her legs. Alright? Both one and the same. Both one and the same. And then here you see a, a European, J. Edgar Hoover with the fast on. You see what I'm saying? So our European brothers and sisters were brought into this science, brought into this order. And here you see it again with the brothers in Turkey, the Europeans in Turkey. All right? This is very important to understand that some of our European brothers and sisters was brought into this order. Okay? It was brought into this order. Okay. And then here you see the Fez and the Joy Washington Masonic Memorial Museum. Right? With Moorish names on there like Ben Bay, Baya, Khalifa. Has been right in the pillar with all these more names on it. Islam, the obey. Okay. And then you see the Masonic apron right here. Look just like this stele that we have right here. It's the same order. All right, it's the same order. It's not different. Okay. And what we did, you know, is that what we did was we brought our European brothers and sisters into this order through masonry. That's what we did. Okay. And everyone's very aware of this, okay? But they just don't speak about it openly because they have instructions from the church not to speak on it, all right? Their instructions is to be quiet and to go along and to get along, okay? Because they're not a country. They're not a nation. They don't have a nationality. Right? They have privileges. They have licenses. They have a privilege to vote. A privilege to travel. Right? A privilege to do commerce and trade. And that's why everybody needs a license. A license to drive. Or to travel. Or they need a license to sell. Or they need a license to travel from one part of the world to another. Because these are all privileges, all right? And when you understand that, then you don't really get upset. You know, and you can really see it with clarity. 
You know what I'm saying? You're understanding that, oh, okay, they're doing what they're doing because it's a part of a business. That's their business. You know what I'm saying? And they're going to continue to do it <laughs> until the business is dissolved, well, until they're not here anymore, or they regenerate themselves, or <laughs> they're going to do it until they choose to correct themselves. But that's up for them to make, not us. We don't make that decision. Okay. And what happened was the how the business came into play. That's what a lot of people get. Some people get confused about because they say, "Well, how do we go from being a pharaohs, like I just showed you, to what you call now? How do we come from being a pharaohs to to being in the position that they in?" And I was like, "Well, through cause and effect, it was a fighting." And when you started to engage, and some of our brothers and sisters started to engage in, in their emotions, number one, and some of our brothers and sisters started to be engaging with their fighting and the actions of others and trying to force others to do things that they don't want to do, okay? <laughs> when that began to happen, okay? Then and only then, that's when their karma started to shift, started to change. And that happened around in the ancient times with Mu, then it happened again with Atlantis, and then the most recent time as a continuation, it happened with the Punics, with Carthage and Hannibal. You know what I'm saying? Hannibal Bay, Carthage, and Julius Caesar, and um, what you call them? Um, Julius Caesar and uh, Alexander the Great and Cyprio Africanus. Okay. It was back when they were doing all the fighting. That's how it kind of shifted. And not just that, it was also understanding the fact that the Moors were then control or correction the more are still in control of everything whether they're in order or whether they're out of order whether they're in harmony with these principles of love peace truth equality right or they're not following these principles they're not aligning their thoughts their words and their actions with love and peace and truth and equality they are still in the position to govern the plane because that's the order that was put in place. Okay? And there are certain contracts and agreements that were made with our Moorish brothers and sisters and our European brothers and sisters. All right? And these contracts must be agreed to or it's going to result in more fighting. Right? And not just that. These contracts are the basis of what allows our European brothers and sisters to do what they're doing today. You understand what I'm saying? And it's very important to understand that through these treaties, you know what I'm saying? These treaty agreements. You know what I'm saying? It's through these treaty agreements. All right? With these treaty agreements, that's how things were, how can I say? Um, that's how our European brothers and sisters got the permission to do what they're doing right now. Okay? And through these treaty agreements, That's what really happened. Okay? And what happened was, you know, um, the truth is our more brothers and sisters from Africa and our more brothers and sisters from Europe, they had the European brothers and sisters in servitude. Okay, 
and that European brothers and sisters couldn't do anything beyond what the Moors wanted them to do. It's an unfortunate truth, but it is the real truth. All right? The European brothers, by primarily their responsibility, what they were instructed to do was to, how can I say, work the fields, work the, um, work the, um, shipping docks and loading docks work on the boats stuff like that maybe do a little farming maybe a little construction right and the european women were primarily taught how to be mates for the moors they was taught how to mate with the moors and the science of the household science of the universe science of the, the family all right how it works okay this is what was going on okay and these next few pictures, you know, it might not be pleasant to see, but it is the truth. This may be a little disturbing for some, and that's true. But understand what goes around comes around. Whatever the European brothers and sisters, I mean, whatever the more the, to our European brothers and sisters, uh, the European brothers and sisters turned right back around and did it to these some of these same more. All right? So you got to understand that. All right? What goes around comes around. It's not just one side, it's both sides, okay? So this first picture here was, was put out by a professor talking about the servitude of the Europeans and they're walking in that line, right? And how at least one million Europeans were in servitude. And then to try to correct that, you had the Treaty of Peace and Friendship on the bottom. All right, that's a treaty of peace and friendship right there with the Moors and the European brothers and sisters. Okay, and this was going on from 1500 to 1800. Okay, the Moors began to see ships and captives from Spain, Portugal, France, England, Ireland, Scotland, the Netherlands, Germany, Norway, and Finland, and started to bring them back into Africa in their markets, or until they would get proper payment, or someone would just stay there and just work for 10 years, 20 years, or however long it may be, all right? Or be transferred to somebody else to take care of, and then they would work or do something, all right, in exchange. And that's the uncomfortable truth, but I ain't gonna say it's uncomfortable. That's the real truth. That's just what happened. No emotions in this whatsoever. That's just what happened. Okay? And you see some of the Moorish navigators, like Juan Carrillo for Columbus, Pedro Alfonso Nino, the brother who founded Chicago. Right? And this bottom one was supposed to be. With what they said, Christopher Columbus was a Moor. It's a little blurry though. But Christopher Columbus was even a Moor. Or at least mixed breed. Alright, because the European brothers and sisters was not really allowed. Alright. European brothers and sisters were not really allowed to travel. Alright, the European brothers and sisters are not what you call the Danes or the Vikings. Those are not European brothers and sisters. Those are Moors, okay? And that's even explained by brother uh, David Ritchie in the book Anc Ancient and Modern Britain, Volume 1 and Volume 2. He speaks on that, all right? Uh, all of Europe was Moors. Even the royalty was Moors at one time. And then slowly but surely, the Europeans began to be more and more incorporated into it, all right? And through the, after these treaties that were signed that allow our European brothers and sisters to do what they were doing, right? King James right down there, right? The Charter of Virginia. All right, after these treaties that were signed, all right, and this permission that was given and granted, 
That's where all this stuff happened. Then you begin to see, you know what I'm saying, um, our European brothers and sisters begin to travel on a more grander scale. Okay. And um, they were given this permission to do this. And the Moors had to sign off on this permission. Okay. And this next picture is a picture of the Pope, Pope Nicholas V, who did the Doctrine of Discovery. And he put out these papal bulls. You know what I'm saying? And these papal bulls was all about how to treat indigenous people when they got here, how to subjugate them under the Catholic Church or create them, try to convert them to become part of the Catholic Church, try to create conflict or incite conflict in some way. Okay? So this is, this is what was going on both at the same time. Okay? This is very important to understand this fundamental truth. All right. It's very important to understand what really went on and how things are really functioning. All right. And when you see some of our more brothers and sisters being mistreated today, that's only because somewhere in their line they mistreated somebody else and that karma has come back around and it won't balance itself uh, of regression. It will balance itself, but it will only balance itself when these Moors dedicate themselves, or Europeans dedicate themselves to their higher self, where they won't engage in no more of the fighting and the conflict, and be starting to tell no more lies and deceit, and their intentions become more pure and peaceful. Once that happens, then their karma will begin to change. All right, as long as they're still going along with what they're going along with, their uh, situation and conditions will continue. Okay? All right. And what we did when our European brothers and sisters got here, we created the treaty, the Peace and Friendship Treaty. All right, that red flag with the white candy and the green cedar tree. Uh, that's a continental flag for the, the, the 13 colonies. All right, we put that in place. All right, with my brother Benjamin Banneker right here. All right, peace of friendship coming from the ancient Phoenix, and we modernized it, you know what I'm saying, to help them um, create a corporation for their own. Okay, and we built Washington, D.C., laid the streets out according to astrology and numerology, All right? That's what we did. All right. And, it, and there's a picture of George Washington letter to the Sultan of Morocco. Acknowledging that the empire is on both sides. It doesn't matter if you're in America or in Africa. The land is Moorish. And we are one empire, as you can see down there. The empire is the entire continent. All right? It's not just one portion. And that Stars and Stripes is a banner of peace and friendship, commerce and trade. All right, it has nothing to do with nationhood or nationality. It has to do with the permission that we gave our European brothers and sisters and we brought them into the order so they can travel and they can buy and sell and trade around the world under certain terms and conditions, okay? Using the science, not using religion not using force or fighting. You understand what I'm saying? And that's what the treaties are for, okay? And 
you see here is another picture of what you call George Washington. And behind them you see a more. George Washington, and then you got Ben Bay, uh, Prince Whipple. Prince Whipple right there, George Washington right there. George Washington right there, and Prince Whipple right there. So as you can clearly see, you know what I'm saying? It was us that had brought George Washington in to this order, okay? And some people say, you know what I'm saying, the one dollar bill, is not George Washington, but it's Adam Whiteship Soot. You know what I'm saying? And this is when, the, as we were bringing them in, you had the church trying to infiltrate this order, trying to, because we were bringing in a republic for everybody based on equality and truth, all right? And the church does not function like that. England didn't function like that. The church was based on the feudal system was based on servitude and force. And that's how the church functioned. So they was trying to ensure that some of our European brothers and sisters uh, go back and force them back into servitude, okay? And the reason why is because, like I said before, all of the European brothers and sisters who came to America was in servitude. Or well, they'd be the plantation owner, the governor, you call it the plantation. If you're a plantation worker, construction worker, carpenter, right? Um, it does not matter um, what their position in the corporation was. All right, they were all in servitude, okay? And this next picture this might be a little disturbing as well. It's a picture of how our European brothers and sisters used to depict this servitude. They don't really share this anymore, but in the 1800s and the early 1900s, it was everywhere, okay? And this is the depiction of, you know what I'm saying, some of the Europeans who will come here to work Christian black codes, why Moors should not call themselves black, or well, it's not wise because you subject yourself to this type of mistreatment. All right, and then here we have some articles of the paper of a European woman, European man, who were in quote unquote indentured servitude, and they kind of ran, they kind of left the colony because they didn't want to be a part of it anymore. And because they left the colony, they was being searched for. They put something out in the paper searching for them. If you see them, let us know. We'll come find them. We'll send them back to Virginia or wherever. And now you have an article called White Servitude, right? And then you have another article on the third side that says European Servitude it says, it says white men for debt. I don't know what that is, but I guess that means the European brother was being traded or he was being used as a commodity for the debt. So in exchange for the European brother, you will be given certain credit, all right? So in order, since the European brother and sister didn't have any money, all right, what they would do is they would bring in, all right, but they ain't have any money. So what they would do is they would bring in Europeans and they would work in exchange for what you call debt today or credit, all right, or gold or shillings, silver, stuff like that, okay? And this was just the norm back in the 1800s. Okay, and here you see again a European captain paying tribute to the Bay, Bay of Algiers. Well, that's what you call terror. All right, it's a tribute tree. All right, a letter from the King George III to the Sultan of Morocco. Okay. 
so there's a lot of treaties that was being made. A lot of agreements that was being made. And Abraham Lincoln was trying to I thought Abraham Lincoln is important because he they said he freed the slaves with the Emancipation Proclamation, but that's not what happened. If you look in a dictionary or etymology and you see what emancipate means, it means to transfer. Alright. So it doesn't mean to set free necessarily, it means to transfer. So all of those Moors or Euro really Europeans who were in servitude, they did not get released from servitude. Alright, they got transferred from the corporate families, the plantation families to the corporate states now. So now it's the state's job to look after the European brothers and sisters who are in servitude, not the individual families, okay? And to back up that, I, you got this one thing here, you can't even see it though, it's a little blurry. But it, it, it's supposed to say, um, Black Law Dictionary, the term of free white person. You see free white person, and they clearly state that free, to be free, you have to be mixed. All right? Free white person includes, and I quote, and I quote, and we're probably close after this. Um, free white person includes all European Jews, or less, intermixed with peoples of Celtic, Scandinavian, Teutonic, Iberian, Laps and Finns, and the Basques and Albanians. It includes the mixed Latin, Celtic, Iberian, and Moorish inhabitants of Spain and Portugal. The mixed Greek, Latin, Phoenician, North Africans of Sicily, and the mixed Slav and Tartar inhabitants of South Russia. That's a free white person is the Moors. Alright. It says it does not mean Caucasian race, Aryan race, or Indo-European, Dravidian, Semitic, or Mongolian peoples who inhabit Persia. The Syrian of Asiatic birth and descent will not be entitled to become naturalized citizen of the United States as being a free white person. Unquote. Okay. Thus, the free white people are the Moors or the mixed Moors. Okay. If you are not mixed, right, it does not mean Caucasian, Aryan, or Indo European. So you cannot be, you cannot be Dravidian, Semitic, you could be Arabian or from Hindustan or Mongolian or Asian or Chinese, Japanese, Korean, right? They cannot be naturalized as free. They can be naturalized, but they won't be free. They will be naturalized as subject to, right? Well, they'll be have to be put into the system. All right, and this was 18, that was 1870, okay? And Abraham Lincoln's job, you know, Lincoln, his responsibility, is, the Moors freed themselves, if you can see here. This is um, Journal of the Senate, April 8th, 1884, Section 12, 13th Amendment, Section 12. All right, it says here, and I quote, all right, the Moors were not in servitude. The Moors were not free from the Emancipation Proclamation. It did not have nothing to do with the Moors, okay? And it says here, and I quote, the traffic in slaves or servants with Africa is hereby forever prohibited on pain of death in a full forfeiture of all the rights and property of the persons engaged therein, and the descendants 
of Africans shall not be citizens. Unquote. Okay. So as Moors, we can't be citizens. They can't traffic Moors, but they can traffic Europeans. You see what I'm saying? And Abraham Lincoln is very... Abraham Lincoln is very aware of that. All right? And what they're trying to put in place to answer the, 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 the uh, what you call infiltration was, as you see here, they said they want what? I want a nation of workers. You see that? I want a nation of workers. The yeah, Rockefeller education system. You see what I'm saying? Where well, they're not trying to create poets, as they say it. They say they're not trying to create. We shall not search for embryos to create artists, painters, or musicians. All right? Nor will we cherish even the humbler ambition to raise up among them lawyers, doctors, preachers, statesmen. Okay? Their job was to create workers who go into the business. A system of their job, and I'll quote, was to create a system of indoctrination and training called the Rockefeller Education Program, where the children will be taught this false history, false law, and trained in how to function as compliant human resources to be used by the government and the industry for commercial purposes under statutes, codes, and ordinances. And this new corporation without really being educated at all. Uh, this education system is designed to plan the lives of children through creating learning imbalances like ADHD, dyslexia, ADD, and others that can be drugged with Ritalin, prescription pills, alcohol, marijuana, tobacco, cocaine, sugar, coffee, and junk food. And this system is still in place to this day. Okay? So this is what the infiltration was. Okay? And our job is to correct that. Now, now we're trying to correct that. All right? But the only way to correct it is to tell the truth must be truthful, you must proceed in peace and truth. And with that being said, I close as long. Um, till next time, family. You know what I'm saying? I wish everybody all the best as well.